Let me just say, it took me well over three weeks to set that up in my house, so I'm so glad it went like that. I wasn't sure if it was going to turn out or not, but wow, that was pretty amazing, huh? Okay, yeah. That was amazing. I was scared that the whole Pac-Man thing wouldn't happen because that was my, no, that was not my idea at all. That was just a video, so really good to be with you guys. Um, That was cool. I agree. I am really excited to be with you guys. I'm Anthony, and I get to be with you guys today to continue our conversation about Paul. Now, I want to do just a little quick recap of some things about Paul, just so we are all on the same page. But what a crazy week with all this rain and all this crazy water. Anybody here uh, get to enjoy being, anybody play in the rain at all today? Or not today, but this week? You. All right. All right. All right, well, part of our story today that we're going to get to in a little bit is some crazy water stories as well, but I don't think people were playing so much in the rain, so we're going to get to that in a little bit, but we'll keep you guys here. So Paul, let's remember a few things about Paul, right? We've been talking about him for months. We almost got everybody here. Good. Well, let's do a real quick recap on Paul. Paul, before his name was Paul, was named... Saul, right, remember the story about how he was persecuting people, God got a hold of him on the road to Emmaus and uh, got him, got his attention, and then we've been talking about all these things, so thank you, yeah, this is awesome, I feel like a rock star, like people are screaming in the middle, this is, you guys are awesome, all right, so, totally transformed his life, I really appreciate you saying that, because that's what we're talking about, he went on how many missionary journeys because his life was transformed? He went on three, that's right, and the story we're talking about today comes right after the end of his third story. If you remember from last week, we talked about this, the third missionary journey was ending, and he was going to head back to Jerusalem, but someone warned him. What, what did they warn him if he went back to Jerusalem? Anybody remember? They warned him that he would be, they didn't necessarily say kill, but they said that, it, that the people, the religious leaders in Jerusalem were waiting for him. They wanted to take him and they wanted to kill him. So yes, he was warned that, that people were there who wanted to kill him. And Paul said, oh no, people want to kill me. I'm going to run the other way, right? No, that's not what happened. He said, even if that's true that people are there, he decided to go. And he went there to Jerusalem because God told him to. You got it. And so today we're going to talk about the whole idea. So this is important. Um, is that we can trust God no matter what. So when he tells us to do things, we should do it even if we know maybe it's not going to be the most ideal thing for us as well. So this is one of the big picture things about um, we talk about. Can you guys all say this with me? I can trust God no matter what. You guys ready? One, two, three. I can trust God no matter what. Now... Because I can trust God no matter what, that means if I do trust him, everything's going to be perfect, right? No. 
That's a really good point. I really want you guys to start thinking that through. And when you hear Paul's story today, and when you think about Paul's story from, you know, the last several months we talked about him, we realize that doing what God wants us to do doesn't mean that everything's going to be perfect. Yet, inside of that, we can trust him because when God tells us to do something, we should probably do that. Um, and God is the king of the world, man. You're like God's hype man. I love it. That's perfect. So this is exciting. Um, you're absolutely right. So back to our story, or almost to where last week ended off. Paul gets back there to Jerusalem. There's religious leaders there, Jewish leaders who want to kill him. Like you said, they want to kill him. They get him, and they're, they're going to try to kill him. And the Romans who were in charge saw the commotion. They came and they got Paul. And so Paul's in their custody. And then someone warns the, the Romans that, the, the, that someone is trying to kill Paul. And they take Paul out, and they bring him over to this place called Caesarea. And he's there under Roman control. And that's where we're going to start our story today. As we start our story today, one of the things we want to kind of do a, a little review on, or at least um, share a little bit more with you, is this thing called the armor of God. How many of you guys have ever heard of the armor of God? What is one piece of the armor of God that you've heard of? Someone, someone shouted, or actually I'll grab this microphone. Um, so what is one piece of the armor of God? Right here, one piece. The sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit. So we're going to talk a little about the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. And so for Paul, Paul, God actually, angels and God talked to him. So that's part of the word of God. But Paul also would have had the Old Testament to look at. And just all the word of God and all the things he had learned from that. So what is another part of the armor that we have heard of before? The belt play a truth. Oh, the belt of truth. Right, hmm, the belt of truth, what might that work with? We're going we're gonna to show a video in just a minute that will talk a little bit about the belt of truth. But the belt of truth is this idea that um, people used to didn't have like great pants like these. They had these robes. And if you're trying to do something, you might trip. And if you were in battle and you tripped, what do you think would happen? You would probably easily get killed. Yeah, so, so this idea of truth, and uh, we'll talk more about that in a second. Um, you got another part of the armor? The shoes of faith. Yeah, okay, yeah, the, 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 the shoes of, of peace, because it's the what of faith. Anybody remember? Jesus. It's Jesus. Jesus is the reason why we can have faith, because if we didn't have Jesus, we would not be able to have faith. But what is the armor of faith? Anybody remember? The shield. The shield of faith. Excellent. We'll take one or two more. The chest of faith. The what? I mean, the chest of righteousness. Oh, yes, the breastplate of righteousness. Excellent. The helmet of salvation. Helmet of salvation. Did we miss any? The belt of truth. We got the shield. Okay, well, even if you don't have them all, we're going to watch the video, and then we're going to talk about it, so roll the video. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. All right. We're going to bring up a quick slide and uh, just do a quick, quick, it'll be maybe a, hopefully a five or ten word review on each of these things. So helmet of salvation. So what I want, the reason why we're bringing this up 
is because as we talk about Paul's story today, we're going to take some pauses in the story, and we're going to look at what, um, how, how did Paul use the armor of God in the story. So if we can get some ideas of what these different parts are, then as we go and talk about the story, we can see this in action. So the helmet of salvation is obviously, um, we don't save ourselves, but it is understanding that God has saved us and just the truth about that, because it's easy to forget sometimes. So, it's, so the breastplate of righteousness is very similar. Um, it's the idea that we're not righteous because of what we've done, but God has made us righteous, and we still have to put that on, which means we have to do our best to not sin. Down here, the feet of peace, um, what we're talking about here is just that, um, made some notes, my gospel of peace. Um, so it's the feet with the gospel of peace, and we know that um, God's truth and his story is there, and we, can only have, we have peace and not be afraid. So with the feet, the idea of running away, but if we can trust in God and we can have faith in God, we can stay in, in the battle. Belt of truth we already talked about. Sword of the Spirit, we talked about um, the Word of God, both from the, um, for Paul, it would be stuff from the Old Testament, but also things that the um, angel told him. And um, Shield of Faith, again, is just being able to put that into practice. So let's get to our story. So Paul is in Caesarea, and he's there, and there's this king called King Agrippa. And so the Roman Empire was set up so that there was Caesar back in Rome, and then in all these other areas where Rome was in charge of, there were these kings. So when Paul was brought there, he was, had been arrested by the Romans, right? And so he needed to be seen, and he needed to be tried. And so the king Agrippa heard about what has, was going on, and he wanted to hear for himself. So he invited Paul and had him come to his castle or his, wherever his, his setup was, his house. And where, there were a bunch of officials there. there were, it was, a, it was a really a, a bunch of important people were there for this trial. And he had Paul speak. Now, Paul had great confidence in God, so he wasn't scared. And Paul told all the story. Paul told him about Jesus, told him about Jesus and how he had lived, came, lived, all the things that he did, lived a perfect life, died. He then told his story. He talked about how he was persecuting Jesus and Jesus' followers and persecuting God and killing people and that God came and, um, on the road to Emmaus and blinded him. I mean, he told him all the story. He told him about his missionary journeys. He told him about all that had happened. And then in part of that story, he also told him that he was a Roman because not not many people who lived in that area were Romans. They They were Israelites. And he actually said that he wanted to go see the emperor. And at the end of him witnessing and telling his story to um, King Agrippa, he actually was so confident in God and that that doing what God wanted him to do was the right thing to do, he actually asked God. The King Agrippa, if King Agrippa wanted to become a believer. So this person here is, you're on trial, this person could kill you, you're telling your story and you're so confident you ask him if he wants to be a believer. King Agrippa's response was that Paul almost convinced him, like he almost wanted to become a believer, but the one thing about, that Paul talked about was that Paul was a Roman and that King Agrippa could not make a ruling and he was going to have to send him to Rome. Um, and so We're going to talk about his journey to Rome to go see Caesar in just a second. But the question I have for you as we think about this story, he's there. He's telling telling King Agrippa all that was going on. And he asked him if he wanted to be a savior, um, if he wanted Jesus to be a savior. The question is, what part of the armor of God do you think he might have been using to have the confidence to, to ask that question? Any ideas? What? The shield of faith. Tell me a little bit. I, I think you're absolutely right. You would have to have a lot of faith to do this. Talk about what kind of faith you might have to have to ask a king who could kill you if you wanted to become a follower of Jesus. It's okay. It's, it's kind of hard sometimes to, to put these pieces together because it's like, you know, he doesn't bring out a shield and put it in front of him. But what he, he, you're 100% right. He had to have great confidence that Jesus was who he said he was, and that you could trust him. So we're going to actually put up the big question that we ask for this, um, for this whole segment. When should we tell others about Jesus? Okay, let's see what it says here. We should always tell others about Jesus, even when it's difficult. So here is Paul. He has a great opportunity to tell someone about Jesus, and it's really difficult, right? And he does it. Um, and so... Um, he could only do that through the faith that he had in Jesus, that um, 
that Jesus was what he, who he said he would be. Okay, next part of the story is where it gets wet. You guys ready to hear about how it gets wet? All right, so to go from Caesarea to Rome where he had to go to see Caesar, he was going to have to take a boat. So he gets on this boat. There are 275 people on this boat, many prisoners. He's a prisoner and a bunch of Roman soldiers and some people who manned the boat. As they go out, we got a little boat here. Can I see the boat real quick? All right. This is fantastic. So we got visuals here as well. All right. So he's on the boat. In this area right here. This is where he's going because Rome is up here in Italy. And over here is where Jerusalem was. So he had to somehow get across there. And honestly, this boat didn't make, wouldn't make it. But guess what? The boat he had didn't make it either. So he was out on the ocean there, or the Mediterranean, Mediterranean Sea, that area right there. I'll bring you back your boat. Don't worry. Um, he was out there on that boat, and all of a sudden some storms came up. And we've had some storms recently, but we've at least been on land, right? We could go hide in the house, that kind of thing. They were out on the sea 14 days. Seriously, crazy, yeah. 14 days of all this going on, rocking and all around, um, and people were getting scared. What did they do with, uh, in that day when the boat wasn't making it? What would be the first things they would do? Anybody remember from like Jonah? Just shout it out. What would they do? They'd throw stuff overboard. They would have all the weight and the stuff that was there. Like, okay, so what if I lose my clothes, right? If I'm going to die, I don't need clothes anyway. Let's get them over. Mmm, I don't have enough food. Mm, well, you know what? I can't eat anyway if I die. So they're throwing all the stuff over to make things lighter so they could float easier. Um, and so they were, they were really worried. And in fact, the Bible talks about they were, they were so anxious, nervous, and probably busy working trying to stay afloat that people had not eaten for 14 days. An angel. I'd be starving too, but I think they were, I think they were really hungry, but they were more worried about dying than their hunger at that point in time because they still had food on board. They just didn't have time or didn't want to eat it for whatever reason. An angel, the Bible talks about, came to Paul and talk to him. And again, so we talk about this whole idea of the sword of the spirit, right? When God speaks, we can trust him. So the angel says to Paul, don't worry, everyone is going to stay alive. And so Paul had some confidence with that. He went and he told everyone on the ship. So here is a prisoner telling everyone on the ship, everyone's going to live, telling everybody, let's eat, let's get some food. Um, and because what they saw, they saw an island in the distance and they decided they were going to eat and they were going to take this boat. They are going to put up the sails on it because they didn't have motorboats back then, right? Put the sails on it and they were going to go as close to that island as they could, crash into it and try to get there to, say, to be safety. Well, try to get close to it. And so here's what happens. They do that. They eat. They get up there and they start going towards this island. The boat's taking them there or the wind's taking them there. And they get to this place where there's a sandbar where the sand is so high but it's still a long ways to the island and the ship can't move. It's stuck. You might think, great, it's not getting shaken around anymore. The problem is the waves are still coming in, and the boat began to break apart. At this point in time, there were some soldiers who said, we need to jump out and go get, sa get there safely. Let's kill all the prisoners, because in that day, if you were a Roman soldier and you had a prisoner and your prisoner got away, that was your life, right? Remember some of these stories from, like, Paul and Silas in, in the prison and jailers and all that kind of stuff. So the same, I mean, this is the same time, same stuff going on. So um, they wanted to do that, but one of the officers said, nope, we're going to trust Paul. We're not going to do this. Um, we're not going to kill anybody. And the boat came, and it fell apart and broke apart, and they swam to shore. The people couldn't swim to shore, grabbed part of the boat, and 275 people, all of them, made it to shore. Nobody died. And that's, pretty much, that, that's definitely a miracle when you think about the fact that these soldiers didn't think it was going to happen. So they got there, and you're like, whew, this has been hard for Paul, right? Maybe he's going to take a little bit of a break kind of thing. Maybe things are going to get a little bit easier. God tested them. Well, no. They go, and they're going to build a fire because if you're outside and you're cold and you're wet, you want to get warm. They go to build a fire, and as they're getting all this wood put together, a snake comes out. And guess what that snake does to Paul? It bites him. You've heard the story. It bites him. Now, now we think about... No, I don't think anybody, anybody here would like to be bitten by snakes? Good. Okay. All right. So we're doing okay here. Yes. So he gets bitten by the snake and um, all the people there on the island know what kind of snake that is. And they know that Paul is going to what? They know he's going to die because they've seen 
all of these people on their island die. God made it so that he didn't even get sick. Now on top of that, you know, people could have possibly believed, well, maybe this is just a unique person, he just didn't get sick. God also made it so that Paul then could heal people on the island. So while they were there on the island, people would bring all their sick people to Paul and he would heal them. And while he was doing that, guess what Paul was doing? Let's go to our big question, our, our big question again of the whole thing. When should we tell other people about Jesus? When should we do it? We should always tell others about Jesus, even when it's difficult. So, Paul, you got it. She's got it figured out. I'm going to bring you a microphone because I want even the people at home to hear this, okay? Paul was taking every opportunity, and his opportunity right now when he got bit or when he was healing people was what? To tell the hurt people, or the people that were bringing the hurt people about Jesus. So basically the whole island basically heard about Jesus. I think, I think Avery's going to teach next week, by the way, just so you guys know. So you, you absolutely got it. This is what he was doing, right? He had been gone through like this whole, this whole thing where he went through a shipwreck, right? People were trying to kill him. The shipwreck gets bit by a snake. He's still telling people about Jesus, and people are hearing about this. Three months later, they're able to... We're almost there, so stay with me. You guys are doing great. They finally get another boat. They go to Rome. When they go to Rome, um, Paul has to wait to, in order to meet with Caesar. And when he's there, because of all of what's happened, they, don't, they decide not to put him in jail. He's still under arrest. But they put him in a house, and they put a soldier there because they know Paul's not going to run away. Because if Paul wanted to run away, he could have done so many things throughout the whole time. During that whole time where he was there in Rome... People would keep coming to his house. Paul would be writing letters, some of the letters that we read today, right? The story of the Spirit, God's Word. God had some of his letters written while Paul was there in house arrest in Rome. And just comes back to the whole part of the story that we can trust God no matter what. And when is the right time for us to tell others about Jesus? All the time. Whenever we have the opportunity to do that. So... What we're going to do is we're going to wrap up and pray. we got worship coming on. I'm going to return our boat. So thank you for the visual. But if you guys could uh, bow your heads real quick, we're going to pray real quick. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you for the chance to come here today to talk about you and your story. Part of that story of the Spirit is your word, and what we're talking about today comes right from your word. Thank you for Paul. Thank you for his faith that he had in you. Thank you for the faith of, you know, the shield of faith that he used. Thank you for the fact that uh, he was willing to not be scared. And those feet there with truth, he would stay right there. And he wouldn't run away. He told people the truth about you. And even though things were hard, he didn't give up. Help us to be more like you and more like Paul. And pray for a blessing on our worship. In your name, amen. Good morning, everyone. Right now, we get to learn about how God is a God who inspires. And today in our story, we saw how God inspired Paul, right? Even when Paul was in prison or when he was shipwrecked, he was... Oh? It's exciting. Yep, we're good? Okay, sweet. So even when Paul was in prison or shipwrecked, he was still telling people about God because he knew the good news about Jesus. And we also know the good news about Jesus, and we want to share that with other people. So let's stand up, and we're going to sing about that. I've been quiet for way too long. I can't find it. No, no more. Got a story, and it's time to tell. Because I just can't, just can't keep it to myself. Somebody give me your microphone or a megaphone.
love singing you guys. You guys can have a seat for a second, but if our Yellow 2 group wants to come on up, you are going to join us today for singing. Thank you. While they come up, we are going to go over our memory verse. So I think you guys have done this one a couple of times already. So we're just going to go through it. I'll give you some little reminders of what some of our signs are, and then we'll do it as a whole group. All right? So as it is my eager, right, we're rubbing our hands together, eager expectation and hope. For hope, you're crooking your hands, putting one by your forehead, hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ. We're really good at Christ, nice. Christ will be honored. Honored, we're putting our two fingers together. Put one by your forehead and sweep them up. Honored in my body. Body, we're doing hands up by our shoulders and then coming down, body. Whether by life, thumbs up. Kind of the reverse of body, going down to up. Life or by death. Nice. For if to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Philippians 1, 20 through 21. Okay, that's a lot. That's a big one. But you guys are smart. You've got this. We're going to do it all together. All right? Say it with me. As it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Philippians 1, 20 through 21. Nice job, you guys. So this verse shows us that we don't have to be afraid, right? Even when we're in very, very difficult situations, just like Paul was, because God promises to work all things together for the good of those who love him. So we know that we can trust him even in really hard situations. That's what our next song is about. So stand up again for me, and we are going to sing together.
I get down and he lifts me up I get down and he lifts me up I get down I get down and he lifts me up I get down and he lifts me up I get down and he lifts me up I get down I get down and he lifts me up I get down and he lifts me up I get down and he lifts me up I get down I get down and he lifts me up I get down and he lifts me up I get down and he lifts me up I get down was a prisoner in Caesarea. He had asked to see Caesar about his case. Caesar was the leader of the Roman Empire. So Paul got on a ship with other prisoners going to Rome. The journey was difficult. Strong winds and rain tossed the ship. The crew threw things overboard and tried to keep the ship from breaking apart. But the storm did not stop for many days. All the people on the ship were afraid they would die. One night, God sent an angel to Paul. The angel told Paul not to be afraid. God would save the lives of everyone on the ship. Paul told everyone on board what God had said. Take courage, he said. Paul believed everything would happen just like God said. The people on the ship would not die. They would have to run the ship onto an island. 
When the ship got close to an island, some of the sailors tried to escape in the lifeboat. Paul told them they would only be saved if they stayed on the ship. The sailors listened to Paul. No one had eaten in a long time, so Paul told them to eat. He thanked God and broke the bread, and everyone ate. Then they raised the sails and headed toward the island. When they got close, the ship struck a sandbar and stopped. The waves crashed into the ship and it began to break into pieces. The soldiers were afraid the prisoners would escape, so some of them wanted to kill the prisoners. But an army officer ordered everyone to swim for shore. Those who could not swim clung to the planks and pieces of the ship. They all made it safely to shore. Paul was right. God saved all of their lives. Three months later, Paul got onto another ship and sailed to Rome. Paul was still a prisoner, but instead of going to jail, Paul was allowed to live by himself in a house. A soldier stayed with him to guard him. People came to Paul's house and listened to him speak about the kingdom of God and about Jesus. Some of the people believed and followed Jesus. Paul trusted God to keep his promise to rescue them from the storm. He encouraged the sailors to trust and obey God too. God calls us to trust in his son Jesus, who died to rescue us from sin and death, and to tell the others this good news.